Circuit switching is generally used for voice communication and packet switching is generally used for data communication. In order for circuit switching to work, first a transmission path has to be established for communication and at the end of the communication the path has to be turned down. The Public Switch Telephone Network, abbreviated as PSTN, is probably one of the greatest examples of circuit switching. With the PSTN, we have central offices, which are located in geographical areas like cities and towns and rural areas, etc. These central offices are all connected together by a cable and there are switches located within these central offices so if you want to make a telephone call from this phone to this phone for instance it will be able to connect these two phones so that you can speak to each other or if you want to make a phone call from this phone here all the way down to this phone down here which would be the example of circuit switching that I'm looking for now if you should make a phone call from here it's going to activate a switch to this trunk cable here. So once that switch is activated, so it would look like this. It will connect your phone line to this trunk cable here. And once this is connected, your signal will go through the trunk cable all the way to the second central office where another switch will be activated connecting the third central office. And this will continue to the full central office until it gets to the central office where the phone is located then that signal would be connected directly to the phone and the phone would ring. Once the subscriber here hears the phone ringing the phone would be answered and you have a circuit where they both can go ahead and talk. Now circuit switching is primarily used for voice. This is exactly what it is circuit switching. You have a circuit created by switches. A switch within each one of these central offices has created this circuit. Now once these subscribers are finished with their phone call and they hang up that phone, this is what's going to happen. All the switches are now deactivated. So you don't have any connection between the switches and the trunk cable. So you no longer have a circuit. So this circuit is created by switches. That's why it's called circuit switching. This is a packet. It has the source IP address, the data, and the destination IP address. Packet switching is how this packet will be transported from the source to the destination. Here we have a local area network. And we're going to be sending data from computer number one. Now data being sent from any computer is quite large. So this data has to be broken up into chunks and sent into packets. So it would be more than one packet. In this particular case, I'm using four packets as an example. Now each chunk of this data is placed into each one of these packets. I have data, one chunk in Packet 1, another chunk in 2, 3, and 4. Now each one of these packets will have the same source IP address, which is the IP address of the computer here. And each one of the packets will have the same destination IP address, which is the destination IP of the server that you're trying to reach. Now these packets will be sent from the computer through the switch, through the gateway router, and on to the internet. Now our packets here from P1 to P4 was sent from this computer on the network all the way through the local area network to R1. R1 is the first router on the internet and we have our packets here from P1 to P4. Now the job of this router is to use packet switching to get these packets from here all the way to the web server as quickly as possible. Now this router will select one packet at a time and send it along its way. For P1, R1 would decide which way is quicker to send it to R2 
or to send it to R3. So let's say it sends it to R2. Now R2 will have to make a decision as well. Should it send P1 directly to R4 or should it send it to R3 and then R3 would send it to R4. In this particular case, let's say this is the quickest route. So R2 will send it directly to R4 and then onto the web server. Now for P2, R1 finds that now this route is a bit congested. So it would pick this route to R3. R3 found that this route is a bit congested. It would use this route to R2 and then R2 will send it to R4 and then it would go directly to the web server. Now for P3 and P4, the same method would be used in sending these packets to the web server. When the web server receives these packets, the first thing the web server would do is to examine these packets to make sure that they are in order. So here we have P1, P2, P4 before P3. While this is not a problem, the web server would rearrange these packets in the order that they were sent. Now this is how packet switching work. Routers deciding the best route to get packets to their destination as quickly as possible. This is an animation to help you to visualize packet switching. This is Trevor from Telecom Training. If this video was helpful and you would like to see more videos like this one, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you'll be notified as soon as our new videos are released.